Hey everyone, it's Nicole again. Uh, sorry if my hair looks even crazier than normal. Had it up in a little weird ponytail and now it does not want to lay flat again. Um, I meant to film my December wrap up yesterday, but I waited too long and it was getting dark. So I decided to film it today, but of course it's been very gray and overcast all day. So I have to film with my lights on anyway, so that's fun. Um, I didn't read too many books this month, uh, and I have coffee with me because it's New Year's Day and I am very tired and slightly hungover, so I need all the caffeine I can get. Um, yeah, let's just get into the books, because there's not too many of them, and most of them I read for Sapphicathon, so you can watch my, like, vlogs if you want more in-depth details about what I felt about them. So, the first book that I read this month was I Am the Beggar of the World, Land Days from Contemporary Afghanistan. And it's 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 a weird book. Um, it's written by Eliza Griswold, but the actual poems in there are land days, which are kind of spoken poems that Afghani women mostly uh, kind of pass back and forth. So she's translating them, but a lot of them have never been written down. Um, and it was really interesting. And it was also paired with photographs by Seamus Murphy. Um, and this is like a really cool book. I read it from the library as an ebook, and I definitely want to get my own copy because the photographs were really cool. Um, so Landays are kind of really short poems that are usually kind of funny, which was, which was cool. I don't read too many like humorous poems. Um, but they're humorous in kind of like a, a dark way, <laughs> because obviously, um, this, this poetry book is from a couple years ago. So Afghanistan's obviously been through a lot. There's a lot of harsh feelings about the U.S. and their own government and just the world in general. So a lot of them have kind of this dark comedic element to them, which I, like, really connected with and I liked that a lot. And then I read Such Small Hands by Andre Barba. I think that's how you say his name. And he's from Spain. I, for some reason, I thought he was from South America. Um, but he is from Spain. And it is um, translated by Lisa Dillman, who I've realized I like a lot of the books that she translates. So I'm definitely going to be following her. This was a really weird book. Um, I don't know if it's considered a novella or just like a short novel, but it was about this girl who becomes orphaned and then she goes to this like weird orphanage that I, I think is in Spain um, and all of the girls have been orphans forever and so she's very different than them and like she came from a world of privilege and then is now in this like lower class position. So there's a lot of tension between them. They're like maybe seven, I think. They're very young. And then stuff gets very dark. <laughs> and it's apparently based on like a true event that happened. I don't really want to talk about what the event is because it will give away the ending. But I liked it a lot. It was really spooky. I've been really into like Spanish language translated novel novellas and like short stories. I, I just like really like all the themes that are going on, especially like dark ones. This one definitely gave me like Guillermo del Toro vibes in terms of like talking about childhood and like the darkness of it. Um, so if you're into that sort of theme, I think you would definitely like this one. And then the next thing I have, I actually have with me, I only have my comics with me. I almost didn't grab them, but I was like, I should at least have a book or two to hold. So the next thing I read was I Am Not Okay With This by Charles Forsman. And this was for, um, I got this for the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Book Club. Sorry, my 
coffee slime. And I think it was like the most recent one that we got, so November. I don't know if we've got a December one yet. Um, this is about a teenage girl. I think her name's Sydney. And she has these like magic powers where basically she can like um, make people hurt with her brain. Um, and so you're kind of following her being a, a teenager and dealing with that and dealing with her sexuality because she's kind of in love with her best friend who's dating a guy and her relationship with her mom and um, yeah and it's like you're trying to figure out if her powers are like an actual thing or if it's kind of a manifestation of her like depression and anxiety um, it sounds like I would love this book, but I really did not like it, which I felt bad about. Um, I, don't, I don't know why, I mean, it just seemed like something I would be so into. The style was like, the art style was very cartoony, which I thought was interesting with such a like dark story, but ugh, I just feel like he didn't really get down the voice of a teenage girl. It's written by a man, and at first, like, from the cover, because she has really short hair, I thought it was about a guy, and I was like, okay, that sounds cool, but I just feel like he didn't get that teenage girl voice, and there was, like, some weird stuff that she said that I'm like, a teenage girl would not say that. It's clearly something that, like, a grown man thinks a teenage girl would say, and I really did not like the ending. I don't want to say what it is, but if you've read it, you might agree with me. It, I just feel like it kind of wasted all of the things that they had built up from the beginning. And yeah, I didn't like that one very much. The next book I read was The Beauty by Aaliyah Whiteley. And this is the second novella that I've read by her. The other one was The Arrival of Missives. And I think those are both published by Unsung Stories. I really like the novellas that they come out with. Um, so this one was about a world where all the women have died because of this mysterious disease where mushrooms like grow out of your body. And it's about the men that are left, specifically this like kind of community that had been formed before this disease of these kind of outcasts that live in like a secluded rocky mountainside. Um, not like the Rocky Mountains, there's just like little rocks everywhere. Um, so it's about all the men trying to live a normal life without any women, and it's about this one character who's like the storyteller, and he tells stories about what life used to be like back when there was women. And then some weird stuff happens, and it gets very interesting, and um, it would have, it have like really good discussions on like gender roles and like societal norms of what like gender should be and I really liked that a lot and definitely gave me some Octavia Butler vibes. Alright, and now we're getting into the Savic Thon. So the first thing I read for Savic Thon was Passing Strange by Ellen Clagus and this is a Tor.com novella and it's about this group of women in 1940s New York and they're all uh, lesbians or bisexuals and obviously you can't be that <laughs> in the 1940s in the US so they gotta kind of be secret and it's kind of about the underground culture in San Francisco of like uh, like drag performances and about the these two women that form a relationship together. And I thought it was really well written. The characters were like very effortless, like I immediately knew who they were and what they looked like. Um, but there was some like weird al um, magic elements that like needed to have more explanation. They were just kind of thrown in briefly at the beginning and then not brought up again until like the very end. And it just felt very weird and out of place. And they needed to be there for the plot, but I just wanted some more explanation. But besides that, I thought it was a really great book. 
And the next thing I read, I wanted to read it for Sabbathon, but then I realized there was no female-female relationships in it. I was just making assumptions. And that's Slam Volume 1 by Pamela Ribbon and Veronica Fish, and this is about a uh, roller derby in... I think they're in Los Angeles. So it's about these two girls who meet during, like, roller derby boot camp, and about their friendships and how they, like, grow in roller derby and, like, their outside lives. And I thought it was very, very cute, and um, it was fun to, like, learn about roller derby. I think it's really interesting. If I was more aggressive, like, in sports, I would love to play it, but I'm, like, very passive when it comes to playing sports and being athletic. So yeah, I thought this was really adorable, and I'm excited to read the next volume whenever it comes out. And then I read some comic books. So I read Paper Girls 17 and 18. Um, I think an arc just finished, so I'll be a new one. Um, it's, it's good. I like it. Can't really talk about it because it's kind of far in the series. And then I read Saga issue 48. And this one is very good and cute. Nothing too horrible happens. Um, but they're taking hiatus until February and this one was from like November, so it's gonna be a while until the next one. And then I read The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. I didn't read this for Sabbath Fun. It was just like due back at the library, so I needed to like get it finished. Um, and I definitely thought this was only like the first part, like the letter he writes to his nephew. But there's actually a whole other essay in there, um, which I like wasn't expecting. Um, and that one is more about like his life and how he got to where he is, and his views on like religion and power. I thought it was interesting, but I wasn't really expecting to read so much about religion. Um, like, that's fine, but I just wasn't prepared for that, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a very important work, obviously. And if you've read Ta-Nehisi Coates' Between the World and Me, I think you should definitely check this one out because it's kind of his inspiration for that book. Alright, and then now we're na back to Suffolk Thon Reads. So I read three more books. The first one was The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Scrutzi, and I'm so excited that I read this. I had just heard about it on Cece's channel, Problems of a Book Nerd, and I was like, wow, this book sounds great. Why is no one else talking about it? Uh, it's about this girl who train sea monsters in this society where sea travel has become a lot more prevalent, so there's more piracy. So scientists have created these sea monsters that like bond to ships and protect them from pirate ships. And she gets captured by pirates and there's a really sweet romance and it was so good. And I didn't know I needed a book about pirates and sea monsters, but I did. And I'm so excited to read the second one. Alright, and the next thing I read was Knit One Girl 2 by Sheer Glassman. And this is like a little novella about two Jewish girls who fall in love. They're both artists and they kind of... one of them it makes yarn and she gets inspired by the other girl's paintings and they want to do like a collaboration together and then they kind of start falling for each other based on like their art and also their interest in this one like television show and like fan fiction for it and it was very cute but a bit too cutesy for me like nothing really happened even the, like the flirting didn't really feel that passionate if that makes sense it just felt like people having a conversation and then there would just be like random things where it'd be like oh but she looks cute um but i don't know maybe that's just me <laughs> And then the last thing I read was Hurricane Heels by Isabella Yap, and I loved this a lot. It was, I guess it's considered a novel. It's kind of short though. Let's see. Yeah, it's like 162 pages, so like a short novel. And it's about this magical girl group. There's five girls, and it's told in five sections, one for each girl. And they met at like a summer camp when they were 13, and they like approached by a goddess and got magical girl powers like whole thing outfit weapon 
and it's about that, but it's also about how that affected them in their lives, in their like relationships, how they couldn't really make friendships outside of themselves because nobody would really understand what they're doing. And it's kind of kind of goes back and forth between like their past experiences and then the present where one of them is getting married and everyone's kind of worrying how that's gonna affect their relationships. And two of the girls had dated and then kind of broken it off, but they're clearly like still into each other. So I, I liked it a lot and I love like gritty magical girl stories. But I feel like um there was a lot of like typos in in it which kind of like would take me out of the story and then um the transitions between like flashbacks and like the present were kind of really rough like I would just suddenly be transitioning all over the place and it was kind of hard to keep track of but besides that I thought it was really excellent and there was an essay at the end about her inspiration for writing this book and specifically how like she did an internship in like this tech company in Silicon Valley and she just felt like she was trying to be friendly but all of the men thought that meant like she wanted something more and she like really wished that she had magical girl powers <laughs> to like fight this and how like magical girls aren't necessarily people that have magical powers but like all the women that are like doing great things and it was like a really powerful essay especially after like reading that novel um, so I definitely highly recommend this because I feel like not that many people are talking about it and I liked it a lot. But yeah, those are the books that I read in December. It wasn't too many. Um, definitely would have been less if I hadn't done the Sabathon Readathon. It definitely helped my reading a lot. But I'm hoping to get a lot read in January. I am off this week from school and work so I can get some reading done and it's always a little lighter at the beginning of a quarter so yeah let me know what you all read in the month of december and i'll see you soon with another video bye